am a builder. I am a seeker. I am a dreamer. Good morning and welcome. As we come to silence, please silence your cell phones. And perhaps if you're sitting on the edge, you would move to a center seat so people who are trying to find a chair can come to the edge. Thank you. We are committed to being in right relations with the Nisinan, the indigenous people of this land who are still among us today. These black oak acorns are a symbol of our commitment and symbolize that as visitors to the Nisian land, we support the Nevada City Rancheria Nisian tribe. I'm Sandy O of Emma's Revolution. I'm Pat Humphreys. And we wanted to bring this song to you. We're from Woodland, California, right down the road. <laughs> the land of the Patwin people. And we're bringing you a song this morning that you can sing with us. It was written by a friend of ours named Joel Raphael. And I'm gonna teach you the chorus. It's a phrase that you might have heard if you're in native circles for speaking of the people who came before us, for the people who created us, our ancestors. And the phrase is, all my relations. Have you heard that one? Yeah. I'll teach you the chorus. Here's the chorus. All my relations. Try that part. i 
just be who you are. Each of us was sent here from a distant star. All my relations when I'm all alone. All my relations calling. All my relations when I'm all alone. All my relations calling me home. I'd like to welcome Reverend Jan Ani. I'm the Reverend Janet Ani, the sabbatical minister holding the place of Reverend Kevin Tarsa for this Unitarian Universalist community of the mountains in Grass Valley, California. Whoever you are, whatever your skin color, whatever your gender identification or sexual preference, whatever your cultural identity, economic status, physical or mental abilities, or any other identity that has kept you from revealing your whole self, you are welcome to make a home in this time and space. In solidarity with the indigenous peoples across the United States, I acknowledge the land on which I make my home is the home of the Monacan Indian Nation, one of the few Native American groups still residing in their ancestral homeland of 10,000 years. They are recognized as one of the seven indigenous tribes of the state of Virginia. This morning, we welcome Emma's revolution. No stranger to the Unitarian Universalist world, Emma's revolution was named after activist Emma Goldman. The group has performed at protests for peace, women's rights, labor rights, environmental protection, and other progressive causes. Their songs are also covered by various choral groups, including church choirs and labor choruses. Emma's Revolution later performed many times with Pete Seeger, including at the Unitarian Universalist General Assembly in 2005. They've released four albums of their own music, as well as the album We Came to Sing with musician and activist Holly Near. They have composed songs for social causes, including School of the America's Watch, Code Pink, the Refugee and Immigrant w Women's Network, Black Lives Matter, and the Rachel Carson Center, among others. Five of their songs are anthologized in the 2016 songbook Rise Again, which is the sequel to Rise Up Singing. There's much more to say about the impact of Emma's revolution among those committed to peace and justice. But this morning, we will let their music speak as we gather our hearts and our minds into this sacred space and worship together. We are here to face the truth about ourselves, about this faith we love, and the ways it can presently serve others around the world and here at home, as well as to open ourselves to ways that it can better and more joyfully reflect our potential and core values. We wanna know the ways we are bound to one another, as well as to larger religious movements normally beyond our sight and vision. We say we are open and diverse, yet it is too easy to feel stuck and old paths and stubborn habits, reflecting not so much tradition as our comfort. We want to answer the call to service to a world that needs our message, our hope, our revived energy. We are gathered to learn, to unlearn, to hear, and to move forward. Yeah, we we always warn when we come to a congregation that we might pick different songs. <laughs> so we've done that. 
already for the first song, and we're doing that again for this song. <laughs> because we really want to, we want to stay in the spirit of, of what comes into this room in the, in the moment uh, when we're here. So uh, we just sang last week uh, down in San Diego with our dear friend Joe Raphael, and we thought, oh boy, that song is just going to be the perfect song to sing <coughs> the next time we sing. So um, this one is one that, that Sandy and I wrote uh, to turn on its head the, the ways in which um, white supremacy and, and our, our practice of, of missing people on the margins and, and inadvertently not including people gets embedded in places like in our language. So <coughs> this will be, I'll sing a short phrase. And do you want to do this part? And when Pat sings that short phrase, we'll sing back the words in the light in the first verse. And in the second verse, when Pat sings a line, we'll sing back the words in the dark. And in the third verse, we'll sing we begin as we unlearn, as Reverend Jan said. Come in the light to this place, in the light with our hearts, in the light open wide. We are here in the light giving voice, in the light to the truth, in the light we divide. Let us sing for today. Time is now. We begin where we are. We begin, we have all. We begin that we need to renew. We begin to release. We begin to rebuild. We begin to believe. Let us see.
<clears throat> now we have the opportunity to connect inwardly, to be in and to listen to our hearts. What is living and speaking there? What is wanting to be heard in your heart? We may experience resistance to living, listening. Pains and sorrows may block us, scare and concerns for others may be overwhelming. We may feel suffocated by our hurts and we wish they would go away and that peace would come. Aliveness, joy, delight, gratefulness may also surface and fill our hearts. In connecting to our hearts, we connect with all hearts, those in the room, those in our community, and those beyond. When the music starts, if you feel moved to choose a stone, release whatever it is that you're holding in your heart into the stone, and then place the stone in the bowl right here, which is representing a caring community and the grace that is surrounding us all. Perhaps what feels personal may feel communal. Our burdens may feel shared and lightened. The placing of the stone creates expanding ripples. We know we are not alone in our joy and our sorrow. If you're on Zoom, please feel free to type in your joy or your sorrow that's in your heart into the chat. Whether you choose to place a stone in the water right on the Zoom chat, I hope you will feel held in love. this last stone for all the joys and sorrows that have been spoken and unspoken. Thank you. 
Hear my voice. Women in search of safety, children in need of food, struggling for our freedom. So I am a refugee. Women of hope and courage, living through poverty, fleeing from war and terror. So I am a refugee. I am a teacher. I am a worker. I am a woman. And I am a refugee. I am a mother. I am a daughter. I am a sister. And I am a refugee. Fighting for education. Speaking my native tongue. Practicing my religion. So oh, I am a refugee. Women and Brazilian, see my people through. Sharing our truth and wisdom. So I am a refugee. I am a speaker. I am a dancer. I am a singer. And I am a refugee. I am a writer. I am a lawyer. I am a fighter. And I am a refugee. Women will come together, linking our destinies. Guided by intuition, no longer a refugee. Women of strength and beauty, driven by faith and heart. Moving our people forward, no longer a refugee. I am a builder, I am a seeker. I am a dreamer, and I am a refugee. I am a worker, I am a healer, I am the future, and I am a refugee. I am a hear my voice, I am the future, and I am a refugee. Hear my voice. <laughs> Thank you so much. We wanted to start with that because what you did is what is the sound of resistance. We came, we sang a message, you sang it with us. You elevated one voice, hear my voice, you added your voice. You clapped when I said clap. That is no different than when someone says to you, can you sign this petition about a mine? Can you write a postcard to help get out the vote? Things that you know how to do, things that you already are saying yes to, and the way that we create activism is through saying, wanting to give an invitation to you to say yes to music as part of your activism. Maybe to get you a message that you hadn't heard before. There's so many ways that this song can apply to the world right now. We're thinking about all the wars that are happening around the globe. We're thinking about all of the natural disasters, but we're also thinking about all of the women who are refusing to wear their hijab. We're thinking about the, the people in the streets in Israel and in Russia and all these places around the world really against all odds and risking their very lives stepping out but but it was one person that take that took that first step and many gathered and you know I'm sure a lot of those folks that took that initial risk had no idea how many people would join them uh, in in that resistance and the the power of that you know sometimes in in our news media it it sells more uh, newspapers or gets more eyes on screens if they only tell the bad news. But the truth is with every bit of bad news that's happening around the world, there's tremendous resistance, there's tremendous organizing. And too often we don't see that side of it. So we just wanted to deliver and remind you of that, that good news, you know, that that's really happening behind all of those headlines. Uh, there is there is pushback, there is organizing on, on remarkable scales because there are lots of little concentric circles 
of organizing, and it's happening all around the world. And Reverend Jan had mentioned that song. You didn't know it, but this is the song that Pat wrote for the Refugee and Immigrant Women's Network, which were a group of refugee women and immigrant women who have come to this country for safety, you know, needing to flee whatever they've lived with. But that song continues because the struggle continues. And I was thinking about, as we were driving up here, uh, we have a plug-in hybrid car. As people who travel, we do the best we can, right? Aren't we all making those decisions every day about how to address the world that we live in and what to do uh, to make change? This song we wrote back when we lived in Washington, D.C. It's one of the first songs we wrote together, and we were going to be singing at what turned out to be uh, one of the first climate demonstrations on the National Mall. And we had just heard on the radio before we got there. Uh, a report about that the mountain, uh, that the ice cap on the top of Mount Kilimanjaro was melting. This was in the year 2001 or so. And it was 11,000 year old ice. And we like to come to an event with a song that speaks to that whatever was the particular issue. What we heard in the rest of the article was the kind of thing you would hear on the radio. Of They interviewed a scientist saying, you know, uh, they interviewed and said, well, what do you think could have caused this? Could it be climate uh, crisis caused by people's action? And the, and the interviewer said, it could be. And the... Uh, uh, sorry, the interviewee said, it could be, and the interviewer said, thank you. That was it. <laughs> like nothing about what we could do or and some what of the, we should take some of the, action about. I'm sorry. Some of the research we did, actually, for this song was uh, we discovered uh, something called the, uh, the Alliance of Small Island Nations. And you may have heard in the news uh, recently that those nations are... are, are stepping up to um, call the, the, the largest polluting nations, ourselves among them, of course, um, call us into account for, uh, for uh, risking the, the lives of people who live in those small uh, nations. I'm, try I'm trying to remember the name of that. There was a bill that was just uh, passed in the UN yeah. agreeing that big nations or polluting nations are going to have to support small nations who are suffering from sea level rise. And the reason we tell you that long story from it happened in 2001 to now is because that is how change happens. You know, the civil rights movement, people said it might not happen in our lifetime and they did it anyway. And you are facing this climate question here in your town of 80 years, the next 80 years, what's gonna happen in your county? Sometimes it's a long trajectory. It might not be in your lifetime, but you might take action to make sure that this planet is around for the next generation, 80 years from now. So we wrote this song for Mount Kilimanjaro. We sing it for all of the places who, for whom it's a very present danger about our air and our water and really this planet. So there's part for you when we get to it. Can we turn Sandy's guitar down? <laughs> thousand years ancient ice and snow is melting like eleven thousand tears down the face of Kilimanjaro where time itself is frozen suspended in the air now the water flows on Kilimanjaro damaging the essence of our atmosphere threatens our existence Kilimanjaro oh oh Kilimanjaro you can sing that with us oh oh Kilimanjaro oh oh Kilimanjaro oh oh Kilimanjaro where the ocean Meet the rivers and the bays Watch their waters rise 
reclaiming what were dry lands yesterday right before our eyes from Tuvalu to Tonga the shores of New Orleans Venice to Jamaica Kilimanjaro from the South Pacific Ocean to the Gulf of Mexico flooding from the tears of Kilimanjaro so much you know um sometimes and i don't know if you've heard ministers saying this that folks don't leave humming the sermon <laughs> but today we hope you will leave humming the sermon because that is something that music does for us music can stay with you as can visual art look at the beautiful visual art you choose to have here in your congregation you know you know the value of color and just lifting our spirits art to do that watching dance, participating, you know, creating. Uh, that is, that's the thing that drives us as musicians and keeps us in this sound of resistance because resistance is tough work. It's necessary work. Do you agree? <laughs> okay. Yeah, it's necessary work. It can be tough work. Um, but keeping in it for the long haul and understanding that it is about the long haul and that we want there to still be a long haul for the next people. Maybe it's going to be a little bit easier for them. But we learned about how to do this from some really great teachers in the world. Reverend Jan mentioned that one of the first times we sang with the Unitarian Universalist community was at General Assembly in Fort Worth, which was in 2005, something like that. And, and you know, I remember being on the street, just walking between buildings there and... Um, and somebody said, what are you all doing here? Because they could tell there were a lot of new faces. And someone who was more of a seasoned Unitarian Universalist than certainly than I was explained who this denomination is. And, of course, invited them to come because there was the open service on Sunday. And we've been coming back to GA every year since because there we can connect with communities like you all who care about love and justice and all of the action networks and action committees that Unitarian Universalist congregations create. And it's all because we got connected to you all because of the tall man with the banjo. <laughs> I sang a uh, 
a song, one of the first songs that I wrote, actually, is my, yeah, uh, Andy, we need a little more of my vocal in the house, yeah, yeah, that's better, um, I sang a new song, it was really one of the first songs that I wrote, that might be too much, let's just bring it down just a little bit, <laughs> have a light touch on there. Uh, I sang a new song. It was the first song that I wrote as an adult uh, at a song circle many years ago now. And uh, from behind me came this hand with a little slip of paper on it. And on that slip of paper were some musical notes. And I hear a voice behind me saying, is that how it goes? And I looked at it, and I don't read notation, so I said, I don't know. <laughs> You'll have to sing it to me. <laughs> and I turned around, and it was Pete Seeger. Oh. And that was the, the beginning of a almost 30-year uh, friendship. And, um, and this song came uh, at the end of that 30-year uh, friendship. As and Pete was a guy who knew that he could sing in a concert hall and also that he could sing on a street corner up to really his last year. He was out on the corner in Beacon, New York, holding up End the War signs. Um, and just being someone who made those connections uh, makes him a really strong mentor for us. So the chorus will teach it to you, because Pete would want it that way. <laughs> Is, oh, hear the banjo. Festival in early fall along the Hudson River shore, a harvest gathering, asking me to volunteer to keep the river clean and clear, to celebrate the river's life and all the gifts she brings. Sing it for us. Oh, hear the banjo ring, hear the people sing. It really does. Oh, Sing, people sing. Stood up 
much. Thank, thank you, Pat, and thank you, Sandy. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> we now have a message from our board treasurer, Gail Schultz. Okay, guys, that is one tough act to follow. <laughs> I mean, why did we do it to me? Okay. My name is Gail Schultz, and as most of you know, I am the intrepid, or is it decrepit, treasurer of this community. I'm here today to speak to you about a problem facing us. Our stewardship team has learned that about $30,000 of our previous year's pledge support is ending. Yes, $30,000. That's more than 10% of our budget. Why? This is mostly due to some people moving out of our area and a few have reduced their pledges. What does this mean? It could mean that we are forced to make many unpleasant cuts to our work and we become less, less supportive of our staff, our minister, our outreach in the community, our friends and church family. Under this scenario, we lose strength as a community. How can our community be a force for change and resistance to injustice if it's weak. Alternatively, we can resist making these cuts. We can seek out what adjustments we can make. For example, I'm responsible for the governance part of the budget, the part that pays for things like our fixed costs. I will be recommending that we do not add to our capital expenditure reserve this year or start a new sabbatical reserve this year. We will be reviewing all our licenses and su subscriptions to see if any expenses can be reduced. However, I will not cut out the ability to leave a message on our office phone. For $15 per month, that would be plain stupid. Other committees and ministry teams will be asked to tighten their belts in their budget requests. And we will dig deeper if we can. 
I, for one, have now increased my pledge by 14% over last year. For me, <clears throat> that means some refocusing of what I spend. And I know that there are some of us who, who can do something similar, and we need to do it. Some of us cannot, so be it. We're grateful for what you can give. If any of you can increase your pledge, or if you haven't pledged yet, think hard, and then let our office admin or let me know, preferably by email if you've already sent in a pledge form. But please remember this, to be strong, healthy, adequately staffed for both personnel and programs, we must pull together. As we know, and as our friends Emma Revolution have just said, the voice and action of one alone is weak. But it is when we are we, then we are a strong voice for our mission and values in our small community and in our greater world. So please, please dig deep. Thank you. Thank you, Gail. Our offering is our gift and way to support our church and our community. It is a voluntary and real expression of our beliefs and our values. 25% of our offering this month will support Nevada County Citizens for Choice, an organization providing compassionate and confidential family planning and reproductive health care as well as comprehensive information as needed for informed decisions. They exist to enable choice and to promote reproductive health care access and advocacy. If you want to give 100% of your donation to Citizens for Choice, please put your donation in a white envelope that's inside the basket. The slide will give you some other ways to give. Thank you for your generosity. Your generosity remains essential to our ability to sustain the work of our community. There are several ways to contribute. You may text an amount to 833-579-0483, give via our website at uugrassvalley.org, via PayPal at paypal.me slash UUCM or mail to UUCM 246 South Church Street, Grass Valley, California, 95945. Thank you. The mic, please. Thank you. I've just learned that we have Samantha from Citizens for Choice here. I hadn't been informed. My apologies, Samantha. We'd love to hear directly from you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Please come up. <laughs> Sorry to interrupt the mood. It's so beautiful. I love your playing. Um, I'll just maybe can I just stand right here? Yeah. 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 guys. Wow. I'm so touched. This is my first visit here. Um, what a beautiful service. And I can feel the warmth and the openness in here. Um, so thank you. 
Um, and I think a lot of the messages that we heard today are very timely. Thank you so much for um, pointing out the importance of healing our generational traumas. Thank you so much for the land acknowledgement that is so <laughs> touching. Um, and going along that lines, I just want to acknowledge all of the collective traumas um, that we hold here in this room, um, both you know in our experience in this life, but all of the ancestors that come before us that we hold. Um, my name is Samantha Shady. I'm an outreach coordinator for Citizens for Choice. I'm also a health technician with Nevada County Public Health, and I'm a compassion fatigue specialist and I focus on um, trauma and uh, health and well-being. So um, Citizens for Choice is a very important organization to me. I'm also on the board there. Um, is everyone familiar with Citizens for Choice? Pretty, pretty much? OK. <laughs> um, I'm amazed, you know, the more that I learn about this organization. It was started way back in 1989 as um, kind of a, a group effort of three different local organizations. And we had, um, you know, focus on policy, advocacy, education. We have a condom distribution. We um, stay up to date on all of the current legislature and lead, you know, efforts for um, advocacy and new policies. But in addition to that, and I don't know if everyone knows, but we also fund the operation of a local reproductive health clinic. Um, and it is the only clinic that we have in Nevada County. So, um, you know, especially as a rural community where we have a lot of marginalized communities, sometimes marginalized in a lot of different groups at once, um, the clinic is very, very important. It provides um, STI testing for, um, for all, all people and all bodies, um, pregnancy testing as well, um, gender affirming care and hormone therapy, which is which is actually huge. It's the only um, service we have in the county. Um, and a lot of um, youth that we have here are needing to travel to Sacramento, which you can see how the barriers that kind of add up to that. You know, a lot of youth aren't driving either. So what does that mean? And what does our transportation system look like here in Nevada County? And how can that be improved? And um, the current climate, you know, a lot of um, states across the country are no longer offering birth control or reproductive choice. So um, we're also increasing our funding efforts um, to include funding um, set aside for um, purchasing large amounts of um, medical abortion aids and um, for people in other um, uh, states <laughs> across the country. And um, also for um, travel expenses and um, accommodations for people who are in emergency situations. We also have an Instagram account. How many Instagram users do we have in here? Just out of curiosity. <laughs> so I highly encourage you to follow Citizens for Choice. I know that we're kind of all fatigued from social media, COVID, Zooming, um, and we're all sort of just getting used to being um, together again. Um, I just encourage you to check it out. It is serving right now as the only education platform we have for sexual health and reproductive education and justice. Um, we don't have any sexual ed programs um, in our schools here. So um, this is a way of teaching people about, you know, consent and healthy relationships and um, how to keep themselves safe. Um, and then offering referrals also for the LGBTQIA plus community. So any donation you're able to um, share with Citizens for Choice today directly goes to keeping the clinic open. We pay for all of the rent um, and the utilities and all of the outreach um, to bring people into the clinic. So if you see us somewhere, you know, tabling, please stop by and say hi. We're trying to really get out there and engage a lot more. If you have questions, you know, about your own sexual sexual health or reproductive needs we're here to help you with that too um, and donations aren't the only way to pitch in you know just um, spread the word let people know that we're here and that we um, you know we're willing to work for the community and with the community and we want everyone to have compassionate equitable access to basic human rights so thank you very much for everything you've done so far and everything you're doing here. And um, yeah, keep up the good work. Thank you.
Thank you for your generosity. We dedicate these gifts to the vision of reproductive justice in a community where all are free to make the choices best for them. There's so many people to thank this morning, but particularly Emma's revolution, <laughs> Pat and Sandy. And I also understand if you'd like to have their songs go on in your life, they have CDs out in the hallway. I want to thank Gail, our board treasurer, for her words this morning. Um, gosh, so many to thank our AV team and our production crew and our chat host, Eileen Hale and Gail and George and Paul and Andy. <clears throat> our beautiful setting up here, Linda Siska, our greeters, Corey Silva, Jean Gilligan, and Laura. Oh, <laughs> there goes my Chi-Chi. And thank you to all our staff, to Reverend Janet Ani, and to Carol and Mary in the office, and Toby to Rose for your music. And thank you, Siobhan, for doing all the slides, and Aiden for the child care this morning. So many warm thanks to so many people and thank you all for coming this morning. A few quick announcements. Bending the Art Task Force Retreat has a meeting this Saturday, <clears throat> next Saturday. Um, come for tea and meet Reverend Jan Ani um, on the dates that are um, listed there. And finally, we'll have a major fundraising, a wine tasting, May 20th. And there's so many more announcements. Please go to our website. It's a fabulous website, uugrassvalley.org, for the next week's services and all sorts of announcements and things going on in the church. 
So I'm curious, would you like us to rise and stand? <laughs> yeah, so rise and stand as you're able in body and spirit, please, for our final song. And we want to thank you, Carol. You've been so wonderful to work sure. with. And we want to thank everybody for inviting us to be here. I know my mic's not yeah, on. Andy, do okay. we have both mics? Check we need Sandy's one, vocal. Check one, check, check one, check, check, check one. You can say this one. Check okay. One. <laughs> check one. Oh, yeah, we're, we still don't have Sandy's mic. Check, check, check. Yeah, you don't have to turn me up any louder. You could just do the other one. <laughs> check one, two, Sandy, be on your mic. Check one. Yeah, I'm, mine is plenty louder. <laughs> I don't know what you're going to say. <laughs> Good idea. I was going to say thank you for having us. <laughs> So we're gonna sing this song in English and in Spanish. And the Spanish part of this song, if you're not a native Spanish speaker, um, is actually has a lot of repetition. So um, we can teach you these, uh, these lines in Spanish. So um, just, you know, just to, to draw that circle a little, a little closer and, and gather folks in. So there will always be the word always in Spanish, which is siempre. Try that, siempre. And then there will always be the word, there will always be the words sin volver atrás. Three words, sin volver atrás. Try it. Sin volver atrás. Never turning back. And as our friend from Citizens for Choice was saying, we are going to keep going with this. We're going to get our rights and keep our rights. Never turning back. So once we get through the, the first uh, verse of the song, you'll know the whole song pretty much, just with a few changes. There I am. Thank there you. There we go. You can, you can turn it down. <laughs> and turn the podium mic off. <laughs> that will also work. Check one, two. There I am. Check, Yay. Check. Yep. All right. <laughs> right on. Going to keep on moving forward. Keep on moving forward. Keep on moving forward, never turning back, never turning back. Sigamos adelante, sigamos adelante, siempre adelante, siempre adelante, siempre adelante, siempre adelante, sin volver atrás. Sin volver atrás, sin volver atrás, sin volver atrás. Gonna keep on loving boldly. Keep on loving boldly. Keep on loving boldly. Never turning back. Never turning back. Siempre con pasión, siempre con pasión, siempre con pasión, siempre con pasión, sin volver, sin volver atrás, sin volver atrás, sin volver atrás. Gonna reach across our borders. Reach across our borders, reach across our borders, never turning back, never turning back. Vivamos sin fronteras, sin fronteras. siempre sin fronteras, siempre sin fronteras. Siempre reunidas, siempre reunidas, 
Sun, moon, stars are other relatives peering at us from the inside of God's house. Walk with us as we climb, naked, but for the stories we have of each other. Keep us from giving up in the lands of nightmares, which is also the land of miracles. We sing our song, which we've been promised has no beginning or end. As we carry the flame, of peace and love till we meet again and go forth singing. On this one, you can go forth singing and dancing. You know this song. Sing any version of it. You know, and it'll work with our version of it. When Lee Hayes first wrote, <clears throat> when Lee Hayes first wrote this song, there was this kind of tacit agreement that we were all brothers. <laughs> and then a woman came up to Pete Seeger some years later. He wrote the melody to this song and said, Pete, I'm feeling kind of left out. So they started singing Sisters and Brothers. And then years later, a friend, a trans friend of ours came up to us at Oakland and said, Pam, I'm feeling kind of left out. <laughs> and it was during that time when we were working hard to resist a a particular resident of the White House <laughs> may be wear orange for eternity. Yeah. <laughs> um, and so we thought, oh, what would work? Okay, so um, so we decided to sing all of the resistors. So whatever door you come through, uh, however you came to this place, know that we see you and that we love you, and that we'd love to have you sing this song in any way that works for you, and it'll all work together, I promise. <laughs>
Thank you once again. MS Revolution.